You know, I don't really have a very wide angle lens, but it's really hard to capture a whole scene, a very wide scene, without a really wide angle lens. But there is a way you can fix it using your camera and Photoshop. I'm going to show you how. This episode of Live Tech Australia is brought to you by the Ox Digital Pocket Radio. Okay, so if you haven't figured it out yet, we are going to show you how to do panoramic photography. Now for this, you're going to need a camera that can be set to burst mode, uh, which if you don't know what burst mode is, it pretty much is when you hold down the shutter button and you just take multiple shots at once. So your camera will need to be able to do that. You will also need Photoshop. So if you have both of those things, and maybe even a tripod, if you wish to use it, I prefer to just do it freehand. Then let's go in it, and I'm going to show you how to do it right now on the computer. Okay, so now we've got all our pictures of the computer. I've put them in this folder called Panorama. Now, quick tip for you: if you're if you've taken like tons and tons, hundreds upon thousands of holiday photos, and you don't know which ones are your panoramic shots, quick tip is to take a blank uh, shot just before and after the panoramic sequence. Uh, so you can see here, if I go to preview, I've just got a black blank shot. Then you can see it goes from right to left and so on and so forth and it should end up with the black blank shot which is right there so that's my little tip it's just easier file management uh, go to Photoshop now this should work uh, Photoshop CS3 4 and 5 definitely 4 and 5 I'm um, not exactly uh, sure about CS3 um, so good luck but I'm going to go to file automate photo merge and then you're going to be presented with this box, this dialog box, and uh, we're just going to select auto. There's all these different um, different options you can click depending on the type of picture that you've taken. I'm going to hit auto, uh, just hit browse for the files, desktop folder, oh, not folder, sorry, uh, panorama folder, and make sure you don't select the blank images uh, at the beginning and the end, just the panoramic images. Then it loads all the images. Then uh, down here you're going to hit blend the images together, we want to do that, and vignette removal. Not exactly sure what geometric distortion correction is, but uh, I'm going to leave it unticked. Then hit OK. Now it's going to, uh, depending obviously on how fast your computer is, it's going to chew through all that data. It might take a while, might take 5 minutes, might take 3 minutes, might take 10 minutes, depending on how fast your computer is, and uh, obviously how many pictures you've taken. So. Uh, Grab yourself a snack, coffee, whatever, and uh, we'll see you back here in a click. Okay, now we're back. And you can see that we've got all these layers on the side here. Now, if you want to keep it as an edit editable uh, Photoshop file, that's fine. Uh, you can keep those if you like. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all and merge them into one big happy family. So just right click, merge layers. Then you can see here in the window, we've got kind of a weird, a really weird uh, looking panorama. It's like, what the hell? I didn't watch this video to see some crappy panorama. But that's actually how it turns out. You actually do have to crop uh, a bit of it. Now you can see it's also done a lot of the blending for us. But if you really want to be careful, you can use a tripod, like I said. So just crop all those areas out uh, just to make sure that you don't get any imperfections in there just like that, yeah, everything seems to be good, and then hit enter. And there you go, there's your panorama. Who needs a wide angle lens? And uh, if you like, you can always just uh, put a bit of black and white on it. Sometimes some people like that. I kind of like it, it looks nice. And that's pretty much it. It, it. That's the full, full quality image in a panorama. All right guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, remember to share it and like it. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. It helps support the channel. And remember, all our Twitter and Facebook links are in the description below, including the website links. And remember to subscribe for more awesome tutorials, more awesome reviews, and more awesome content. Coming up next is a tutorial on how to do HDR photography. So stay tuned. That's coming up in the next photography tutorial.